Game releases are really ramping up in the month of August. We've got 15 new PlayStation 4 games to go over in this video. And while I wouldn't say August compares to September, October, or November, August is really kickstarting this wave of new releases that we're going to be seeing. And it goes to show considering we've got 15 pretty notable games to go over. Without further ado, let's get right into 15 new PlayStation 4 games coming this August. First up, we have Dead Cells. Dead Cells is a game that's been in early access on PC for a little bit, but now it's finally coming out of its early access state and into its full release. The game is described as a Roguevania mix of roguelike games and Castlevania or Metroidvania style games, progressive exploration of an interconnected world with the replayability of a roguelite and the adrenaline pumping threat of permadeath. It also touts 2D souls light action, tough but fair combat, more than 50 weapons and spells with unique gameplay, and of course, the emergency panic roll to get you out of trouble. The game also features non-linear progression, and personally, I love the art style of the game. Really has a nice old school look to it. Dead Cells will be coming to the PlayStation 4 on August 7th. Next up, we've got Overcooked 2. Yes, the cooking game Overcooked returns with a brand new helping of chaotic cooking action. You journey back to Onion Kingdom and assemble your team of chefs in classic couch co-op or online play for up to four players. There aren't a slew of very engaging cooking games, and I wasn't expecting Overcooked to be anything special, but it turned out to be pretty good, and I'm excited for Overcooked 2 as it's being released on August 7th. Next up, we have a game that's been in the works for quite a while, and that is We Happy Few, another title that's been in early access. The game itself is played from a first-person perspective, and it combines role-playing, survival, and light roguelike elements. The game has very strong narratives while underlining gameplay with a sense of paranoia and designing in-game decisions to moral gray areas and weight, which influence and affect later parts of the game. It's got a really cool setting inspired by various elements of 60s British culture, and the guys that are making it compulsion games did just get acquired by Microsoft so this will unfortunately be their last game that we'll be seeing on the PlayStation 4, but nonetheless, We Happy Few will be released on August 10th. When you smile, you can't help being happy. We have to tell people. They need to know the truth. No. It's better not to know. Wakey, wakey, everybody. And it's another fabulous day in Wellington Road. Next up, we have a game that hardly anyone is talking about, but it really deserves more attention, and that is Phantom Doctrine. The people that do know about Phantom Doctrine are very excited about it because it's often being described as very similar to XCOM. It's a strategic turn-based espionage thriller set at the peak of the Cold War, so think something like XCOM but set in the Cold War. It draws on a wide variety of influences and in capturing the subtle intrigue of classic spy films, and the game thrusts the player into a mysterious world of covert operations, counterintelligence, conspiracy, and paranoia. The game also touts a deep single-player story campaign with over 40 hours of content and features a rich, gripping plot woven with numerous historical events and characters to bring the terrifying reality of the Cold War to life from a unique perspective. Phantom Doctrine will be coming on August 14th. We're on our own. We need to disappear. New identities. New faces. step ahead. Next up, we have a game that's also been in development for quite a while, and that is Dead's Gambit. Dead's Gambit is a challenging 2D action platformer with deep RPG elements as an agent of death bound to his service, unravel the mystery of a land, and discover the true price of immortality. This is another game that has a great look to it, expect some awesome music in this one as well, and Dead's Gambit will finally be hitting the PlayStation 4 on August 14th.
Next up, we have The Walking Dead, the final season, episode one. Yes, The Walking Dead's final season will finally be kicking off in August, with episode one being released in the middle of next month. The Walking Dead has been fantastic. I personally thought season one and two were great. It looks like some people were turned off a little bit by season three, but the final season is featuring the return of Clementine as a playable character, so that's great. And it'll be interesting to see how Telltale decides to wrap up this franchise because this is the franchise that really made all of these other Telltale projects happen. After the immense success of The Walking Dead, it branched off to games like Tales from the Borderlands and other Telltale projects. So for Telltale, this is really the start of the end of an era. And The Walking Dead, the final season, episode one, will be released on August 14th. Come. We shoot them in the head. And what else? Always save the last bullet for yourself. Now, what do you do if I get bit? Next up, we have the Shenmue 1 and 2 collection. Yes, we know that Shenmue 3 is on the way. That game was announced at Sony's E3 back in 2015, but I always raise the question, why is Shenmue 3 being released without a release of the previous two Shenmue games? Yes, Shenmue is fantastic and Shenmue 3 would gain traction on its own, but Shenmue is also a story-driven franchise and just to expect gamers to jump back into Shenmue 3 without playing the first two doesn't make a lot of sense. Well, Sega came clutch and they are bringing out Shenmue 1 and 2 in a collection containing modern ports of the first two Shenmue games in this pack. The bundle will cost $29.99 and feature some refinements, but I should warn you that as great as Shenmue was back in the day, these games haven't aged all too well. The great story is in there. Just be prepared for a lot of quick time events. That is the one thing this game was absolutely notorious for, but nonetheless, if you're excited for Shenmue 3, even if you've played Shenmue 1 and 2, this will be a great way to reintroduce yourself to the story. The Shenmue 1 and 2 collection will be released on August 21st. Next up, we have Warhammer 40k Inquisitor Martyr. This is a game that's seen a couple of delays. We've actually mentioned it in a couple of our monthly upcoming games videos, and unfortunately, it hasn't hit its release date, but it looks like it'll finally be released towards the end of August. Warhammer 40k Inquisitor Martyr is obviously set in the Warhammer universe, and this one utilizes a top-down camera, and it's more of a Diablo-style game focusing heavily on action, both in melee and range. It's got a leveling system, different classes, your Diablo fare. Considering that Diablo 3 has been out on the PlayStation 4 for quite a while, and many of you guys have probably played that to death, it might be nice to change things up in that department, so I'm excited for the release of Warhammer 40k Inquisitor Martyr as it's coming on August 23rd. Next up, we've got Little Dragon's Cafe, coming from Axis Games, and it's being done by Yoshihiro Wada, who's most famous for Harvest Moon. Little Dragon's Cafe has some similar elements, but in this game, you manage your own cafe, and you also raise a dragon. Yes, kind of an odd mixture of gameplay elements, but very interesting nonetheless, and considering who it's by, this one has a lot of potential. It'll be coming to the PlayStation 4 on August 24th. Next up, we've got Blade Strangers. We've got yet another fighting game with Blade Strangers, and fighting games this generation have been excellent. We've had titles like Dragon Ball Fighters, all of the Blaze Blue titles, Tekken 7, Injustice 2, so the competition is very high, but here we have another fighting game in Blade Strangers, and it's a fighting game taking characters from a lot of niche franchises. Franchises represented include Code of Princess, Cave Story, Umihara Kawase, Azure Striker Gunvolt, which by the way is a great game, The Binding of Isaac, and Shovel Knight. There are 
are a couple of original characters to also round out the roster. This definitely isn't going to be a fighting game for everyone, but it's a pretty original one nonetheless. It'll be coming on August 28th. Next up, we have Yakuza Kiwami 2. Yes, Yakuza 6 was just released, but now we're back at it, and we've got the release of Yakuza Kiwami 2, which much like the very first Yakuza Kiwami, is a remake of Yakuza 2. Yakuza Kiwami remade Yakuza 1. This one remakes Yakuza 2 while modernizing the visuals and adding a lot of the modern elements. There are also new story elements introduced to tie up some of the loose ends, and the original Yakuza 2 was considered by many to be one of the best of the franchise, so to see it make a comeback on the PlayStation 4 is gonna be great. Yakuza has been doing very well over here in the West. Let's hope for the same level of success with Yakuza Kiwami 2, although it is coming at a steeper price point of $49.99 opposed to $29.99 like the first Kiwami. So that is a little bit of a bummer, but I'm sure the game will be worth it. It'll be coming on August 28th. Next up, we have Strange Brigade. Now, Strange Brigade is actually being developed by Rebellion, the guys that also brought you the Sniper Elite games. And Strange Brigade is a third-person shooter with a huge emphasis on cooperative gameplay. In the game, you assume the role of an adventurer in the 1930s, and you can team up with three other players to fight against different mythological enemies like mummies, giant scorpions, and minotaurs. The game has four different characters, and all of which can be customized, have different weapons and abilities, so that should add a little bit of an extra layer to the gameplay and give you some replayability. Strange Brigade is is a game that hardly anyone is talking about, and I do for the see this game going on sale rather quickly because I do not see it doing all too well from a commercial standpoint, but hopefully I'm wrong about that as Strange Brigade is coming to the PlayStation 4 on August 28th. This calls for brain power, not just firepower, Strange Brigade. Next up, we have a PlayStation VR title in Firewall Zero Hour. It seems to me that Firewall Zero Hour is one of the most anticipated PlayStation VR titles, as it is often being described as Rainbow Six Siege, but in VR. And considering how good of a game Rainbow Six Siege has turned out to be, that is quite a lofty statement. Firewall Zero Hour is a multiplayer first-person shooter, and it has you choose from 12 different mercenaries, and there's a slew of upgradable weapons. Each mercenary also has their different traits, and we've seen multiplayer games work in VR. We saw games like Riggs Mechanized Combat, Combat League, but it's few and far between in terms of multiplayer titles that were really built ground up for VR and maintain a lasting experience. Let's hope Firewall Zero Hour turns out to be that as it's being released on August 28th. Next up, we have one of the best RPGs of all time finally seeing a release on the PlayStation 4, and that is Divinity Original Sin 2. Now, we saw the release of Divinity Original Sin Enhanced Edition on the PlayStation 4, and that turned out very well. And by all accounts, considering that Divinity Original Sin 2 has already been released on PC, the reviews for that game have been outstanding. It is widely considered to be one of the best RPGs of all time. Its Metacritic score is over a 90, and that is very impressive. And now this version is coming to the PlayStation 4, and considering the first game made a very smooth transition over to the PS4, I expect similar levels of success with Original Sin 2. Now, if you didn't play the first title, you should know that this is an RPG that doesn't really hold your hand much. You are really left to your own devices and figure out the game for yourself, but that really adds to the game and the overall experience. So if you are even remotely into RPGs, this is one to absolutely check out. Divinity Original Sin 2 is coming August 31st. Unfortunately, 
there can only be one. So the relationships within your party shall be put to the test. But before we get there, we have an astonishing number of things to do. Befriend animals, grow wings, teleport enemies or friends into burning pits of fire. Sneak, steal, talk to ghosts. And finally, we have a new Naruto game in Naruto to Boruto Shinobi Striker. Yes, Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm has ran its course. It went through the entire anime series. And now we have a brand new game, Naruto to Boruto Shinobi Striker. This features four different gameplay and presentation compared to the Ultimate Ninja Storm games. And it actually has you battle in teams of four to compete against other teams online. Shinobi Striker is also seeing a brand new graphical engine. And visually, the game does look quite nice. I'm a big fan of the mass online multiplayer experience opposed to the one-on-one one experience that Ultimate Ninja Storm offered and I thought Ultimate Ninja Storm was great but it's nice to see them go a different direction. Now the Boruto anime hasn't been received all too well and it does seem like Naruto has lost a little bit of its luster since its peak heydays but still there's definitely a rabid fan base for Naruto as Naruto to Boruto Shinobi Striker will be coming on August 31st. So that concludes that video. As I mentioned the game releases in August are really picking up. There's a wide variety of games. Something for everyone. Personally speaking I'm really interested in Phantom Doctrine. I'm I'm sure Dead Cells is gonna be great. Shenmue 1 and 2 is gonna be fantastic as well, and you can't go wrong with Yakuza Kiwami 2. Let us know what games you're the most excited for in the month of August, and sound off with your thoughts in the comments section down below. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.